I'd like to take a quick look at organic reactions. There are three kinds of organic reactions we're going to look at. One is a condensation reaction, and that is where a water molecule is removed and two things are put together. And we saw this when we made esters, and we can see that when we put two amino acids together to make a protein. And you can also use that to do polymerization, okay, in order to make long, long, long chain molecules. Second kind is called addition polymerization, and uh, addition is going to happen when you have a double bond. And you can do that for polymerization, but you can also just add something to the double bond. So we'll see a couple of cases of that. And the third thing is combustion. And combustion is just a, another name for burning. So starting with condensation, the idea for condensation is, you know, water forms on the outside of a cold glass, and so when water forms, we say that's condensation. So in the same way, if we have a molecule here, and we can see that this is an acid, and that this is an alcohol, so if on here, if we take the OH from one molecule and the H from the other, that would form a water molecule. And then we just put together the pieces that are left over, so this carbon would bond onto that oxygen. So to get the full molecule, we'd say we have a carbon, we have another carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then we jump over to the other side where we have an oxygen and we have another carbon. So we put hydrogens there, we put hydrogens there. So we started here with an acid, and we had an alcohol, and now we end up with an ester. Now it's kind of a messy, but that's the way this works. So a water molecule is removed. Another example, we have an amino acid. Now an amino acid is something that's got a carbon, and on the four sides we get an acid group, C double bond O, O, H. And on the other side we have an amine group, so hydrogen, hydrogen. And that's where we get amino acid. We have an amine group and an acid group. Uh, we have a hydrogen. And the other side we're just calling R, and that different R would be different types of amino acids. So, going back, let me clean this up a little bit. That if we had the OH from the acid and the H from the amine, and put those together, we would get water. And the other pieces would go together, this, this carbon would connect to this nitrogen. Now when we did that, we would call that a peptide bond. And in this case, we would call that a dipeptide. And if we did it again, because over in this side here, this OH could go to another uh, amino acid, you know, the, nit the amine part of another amino acid, then it could react and form another water molecule, and we get a tripeptide. And as we get more and more of these together, all these amino acids will stick together and eventually fold up and be a protein. So again, condensation reaction. Now, the condensation reaction can also be used to make a polymer. And what happens here is here we have something called ethylene glycol, and ethylene glycol has two OH groups, and that's important. And then we have another molecule here called terephthalic acid, and we can see we have a COOH, but we also have a COOH over here. So what's so special is this molecule here, okay, has two places that it can combine, and our uh, ethylene glycol also has two places. So these two can combine and form a water, and then this could combine with another molecule, this could combine with another molecule, and we could end up getting a long chain, and that would be a polymer. Each of these little pieces here would be called our monomer, and then the whole thing would be a polymer. So we'd have uh, an ethylene glycol, and then we would have um, a terephthalic acid, then ethylene glycol, another terephthalic acid, and repeating back and forth and back and forth. And this particular one is called polyethylene terephthalate ester. Polyethylene terephthalate ester. And you see that on the bottom of water bottles. So if you ever have it, you know, just drinking some water in a water bottle, it's made out of polyethylene terephthalate ester. And it's very recyclable. And that would be called a polyester because each of these little acid and alcohol groups, you know, that's an ester formation, just like we did in class. And so, since we're doing it over and over, it's a polyester. Now, addition reaction is a little different. 
Here we have a double bond, and that's the important part. So for our double bond, you can take that double bond and you can break it open. So here's our carbons. And what used to be a double bond now could hook on two more molecules. So let's go back and kind of see what everything... Here we had hydrogens on all these sides here. And now the new part is open right here and here because we broke open that double bond. So we're going to add to that double bond. We're going to add these two chlorines. So we just put a chlorine on this side, chlorine on that side, and that's called an addition reaction. Now another example of that, here we have a water molecule, and a water molecule could add to this. So we could change that double bond into a single bond. That would give us two more bonds. And we'll put an H on one side, and we'll put an OH on the other side, and that would turn into a molecule. So water, thinking of it as H and OH, one of each of those would stick on different sides of the double bond, and that's another addition reaction. Okay, another one. Here we have a triple bond. So you can see the triple bond could be a double bond, and that would leave room for one for another bond to be formed. So our HBr, H could go on one side, and Br could go on the other side, and we would end up with a molecule. So again, an additional reaction we add to the triple bond in this case instead of a double bond. Now this can be used for making polymers. And you can see what happens here. Here's our double bond. And we could break that open. And when we do, then we call this the repeat unit. And the idea is that if I were to take this little piece and repeat it over and over and over and over, then I could make a polymer. Now a lot of times we show it this way. Just a little n down here means that's repeated n times. And n could be usually about a thousand, you know, two, three thousand times. And this is a picture of this molecule. So you can see every other time we get a chlorine, 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 you know, because of these little chlorine atoms here. And now this one here is, this monomer is called vinyl chloride. It's kind of an old-fashioned name. And we make a polymer out of it, then that would be polyvinyl chloride. And a lot of times we just use the initials for that, so polyvinyl chloride, PVC. And PVC is used for PVC pipes. You've seen those in your gardens. Very good plastic. Another addition polymer happens here when we have this molecule. So here's our double bond. But this time what we have is we have a benzene ring hooked onto our double bond. So to kind of show this in a little you know, easier format, here's our benzene ring. And here's our two carbons. So this is our repeat unit. And what happens is that we could continue on here, continue on there. And you can see that we could get this molecule that would we can, that we keep continuing. And again, we could say N. So this is called styrene. So when we get done, this is called polystyrene. And because of the benzene rings lining up with each other, this is a very brittle sort of a plastic. Very strong, but very brittle. And one of the places you see this really commonly is when they make protractors. And protractors, I don't think that I've ever seen a protractor that isn't cracked somewhere. It's very strong, keeps a good edge, but it does crack pretty easily. Um, and what happens, sometimes, you know, they also make like forks, you know, plastic forks out of that. And you know, if you, they're good and strong, but they will break if you're not really careful. This one is very pretty because what it shows is pol po polarized light coming through this shows where there's areas of stress when the plastic is injected into the mold. So this is polystyrene. The last kind of reaction here is called combustion. And we've seen combustion, we saw that at Halloween. And combustion is just another name for burning. And so methane, which is a good fuel, to show combustion you had to combine with oxygen. The carbons and oxygens turn into CO2. And the hydrogens and oxygens turn into H2O. So that is the basic structure for combustion. We'll do it again. Here's propanol, so C3H7OH, and that could be rubbing alcohol. Again, we just mix it with oxygen, turns into carbon dioxide, and the hydrogens combine to make H2O. Now, the other piece of this is we need to go back and balance this, because for every reaction, there should be the same number and kind of atoms on the left side of the arrow 
as there are on the right side of the arrow. So taking one element at a time, we can see here we have one carbon, here's one carbon. So essentially we can put a one in front of those places, and a lot of times we leave the ones out. Here we have hydrogens, and here we have hydrogens. But on the left side we have four, so we need to put two in front of the H2O, our coefficient, to show that we have four hydrogens on the right. Finally we need to do our oxygens, and we can see we have one times two, so that's two oxygens and two times one, here's two more oxygens, so we have four oxygens on as products, so we say two O2s to get four oxygens as our reactants. And that's a balanced combustion equation. We'll do the same thing again. Down here we have one, two, three carbons, so we're going to get three carbon dioxide molecules. Here we have seven plus one, we have eight hydrogens, so that means we could make four water molecules. Now on this side we have three times two, we have six oxygen atoms. Four times one, four oxygen atoms. So all together we have ten oxygen atoms as products. So we need to have four, ten oxygen atoms as reactants. There's one here in the alcohol, so nine of them form the oxygen molecules. So we would write that as nine over two we you know we wouldn't write four halves, we'd say nine over two. Now, another way to write this is to write all of our chemicals, but when we balance the equation, just double all of our coefficients so we don't end up with any fractions. So in this case, we could use two and nine, six and eight and those would balance our equation. So 1, 9 halves, 3 and 4, or 2, 9, 6 and 8, both of those are valid ways to balance our combustion equation. And these are the three reactions.